uh, in today's lecture we will uh, understand the concept of the buoyancy so today's lecture will comprise of the principle of buoyancy and we'll understand how the buoyant force works and uh, how to get the uh, value of the buoyancy force and second thing uh, we will use the principle of the buoyancy for what would be next is hydrometer so hydrometer is a device which is used for the measuring the specific gravity of any liquid so this kind of device is based upon the buoyancy principle now third thing then we will go for a uh, numerical problem for solving a numerical problem and through which we will develop our standing for the buoyancy principle so here on the right side if you can see so this is a sea level and uh, a ice an ice is floating inside in the sea this particular part is your submerged one and some part is float above this sea level we can call it as a floating body floating body now so this buoyancy was discovered by a greek scientist uh, uh, which is archimedes so what the principle he has given is called as the principle of the buoyancy which states that whenever a uh, body is placed in a static fluid the buoyancy force which is applied on this body is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body so this states like this way you can see now let's understand the uh, uh, this particular principle using uh, some examples to understand the principle of the buoyancy let's take two examples uh, where in first case this is your case 1 case 1 where this a body is completely submerged inside the fluid so this is the case of submerged condition and another case where this case 2 is there and where this body is floating one you can see this particular body this particular body is inside the fluid and this particular body is such that which is floating above the water surface so water surface is here only and uh, this is partially submerged and partially floating okay so let's first of all let's take the first case so in first case if you can see uh, surface there is a surface which is uh, a d and c on this particular surface the fluid pressure will working downwards so what will be the actual fluid pressure which is working on this well this will this will be the equivalent to the weight of fluid above this surface so weight of the fluid contained inside the volume a f e c and then again back to d and then a so whatever the volume inside this particular volume will be the force working on the surface we are considering so in the case of the surface let's say surface a d c the force which is working is that is weight contained inside a f e c and d so let's take this is equation one now uh, let's take another surface that surface is your a b and c on the surface the fluid pressure will be working upwards and the force which is working on this surface will be the weight of fluid which is contain contained inside a f e c and then again back to b and then a so whatever is the weight of the fluid which is contained inside this one will be the force which is working on the surface a b c 
so surface a b c and the force which is working upwards that will be the weight of the fluid contained inside a f e c b and a let's say equation 2 so if we take the uh, difference of the forces which is working on these two surfaces this will look like let's say this one this much this much force is working on this one and on this particular surface the force is working downwards on this surface so if we take the difference of the equation 2 and 1 this will be equivalent to the force which is the weight of the fluid contained inside this imaginary volume that will be your the buoyancy force so that is your buoyancy forces buoyancy force that is working on this body is for weight sorry force working in the second case that is your uh, w a f e c b a minus w a f c sorry a f e c d so that will be the weight of weight of the fluid which is contained inside the this particular volume clear volume is your a d c b a that is your buoyancy force and this will act upwards why it is upwards because in the first case force is working downwards and in second case force is working upwards and the force working in uh, on the uh, this particular surface is higher because this is situated at a deeper depth compared to this surface adc now using this particular principle we can find out the buoyancy force and that what is the meaning of the buoyancy principle uh, given by the archimedes now if we imagine that where this particular force will be working this buoyancy force and suppose this is the location where this all buoyancy force is working this is the centroid of the displaced volume of uh, water and this will be called as cb this is called as center of buoyancy and uh, on this center of buoyancy the buoyant force can be assumed to working at now let's take another case where this body is something like this and this is uh, floating on the surface so your surface is like this one so above this surface everything which is above this one is floating and below this one is inside the fluid so this is a horizontal surface now using the same principle what we illustrated earlier so buoyant force will be the weight of the fluid which has been displaced so weight which has been displaced is the volume which is contained inside this surface and see so that is uh, in second case the surface which is weight of the fluid displaced by the volume of a b c a and this much volume has displaced so the center of buoyancy will will be working somewhere here so displaced volume this center will be somewhere here and we can write it as a cb center of buoyancy and this will work upwards now i hope using this illustration you all of you will be able to understand the buoyancy principle so let's take an exam numerical example where we will uh, solve using this particular problem using the buoyancy so in this problem uh, a 500 newton flat bottom container in this particular figure which is 600 mm wide and 9 and 900 mm long so this 900 is inside into the plane that is not visible to you now it uh, ask you determine the depth of the container 
that will float into the water uh, first a that is when it carries a 200 newton steel block and in the second case case when the block is suspended directly beneath the container and what we have to uh, what we have to assume is the specific weight of the steel block is 77 kilo newton per cubic meter so let's start uh, this problem so before proceeding uh, for the solution of this particular problem uh, let's first of all decide what principle we have to apply so if you can see in case one that is this case so some depth uh, one this particular uh, combination of the bodies or you can say once this system is inside the fluid and floating so this will dip by a distance of d and when this depth of uh, distance d has been dipped inside the fluid that means whatever is the volume displaced by this submergence will be equal to the weight of the container weight of the container as well as the weight of the block and in the second case what principle will be apply once this particular weight is suspended from this container what happens over there that once this is inside the fluid it will also displace the fluid and once it is again displacing the fluid there will be change in the submergence depth of the container because in this particular case the total buoyant force is being shared by the particular weight this block and this submergence of this container however in the first case the buoyant force will only coming from the submergence of this container so uh, let's start this solving this particular problem we are assuming that the uh, this water is incompressible and the specific weight of the water is 9.81 10 to the power 3 newton per meter cube if we draw the free body diagram based upon this one so this will give you the free body diagram is such that that if this body is floating so summation of all forces in y direction that is your y direction will be zero so let's figure out the what are the uh, forces which are working in the y direction that are the weight of the container plus weight of the block that will be equal to the buoyancy force so weight of the block plus weight of the container is equal to buoyant force and this buoyant force is happening due to the submergence of container only so that's why we are writing it f b c so uh, we are not aware that how much uh, height has had has submerged inside the water so let's assuming that the submerged height is d so the fbc that will be equal to uh, 600 mm so that you can write 0 0.6 0 0.6 multiplied by its length is 0 0.9 and multiplied by d that is the volume of the volume of the water which has been displaced and then multiply by the density of the water that will be the buoyant force and that particular thing will be the sum of the weights it is supporting so wb plus wc that is given to you Th those are the 500 newton plus 200 newton that is your 700 newton so we have to we have to uh, we have to equilibrate the equation one and two and that will give you the 700 is equal to 0.6 multiplied by 0.9 into d multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 and if you solve this particular equation the value is coming out to be 700 divided by uh, this is 0.54 multiplied by 9.81 
multiplied by 10 to the power 3. That will be the depth of the submergence of the container and the answer will be in the meter. So, this comes out to be 0 0.132 meter. Now, if you can see the height of the container is 350 mm. However, the depth of the submergence is 0 0.132 uh, 132 mm. Let's move for the second part. In the second part, once you bring out this particular block and let it submerged inside the fluid then the depth of submergence is going to change that is pretty sure and we are assuming the depth of the submerged that is d dash okay so using the same principle that let's first of all uh, figure out what is the buoyancy force so another thing is that uh, here the buoyancy total buoyancy that total buoyancy l is because of the force of the buoyancy which is produced by the container plus force of the buoyancy which is created by the block this is our block this is our block and this is our container so both are dipped inside the fluid so both of will generate the buoyancy so one buoyancy force is due to first uh, container and second buoyancy force due to the this block and this this we can write fb due to the block and this is fb due to the container so sum of the, this one will be this one now in order to figure out uh, let's say this is equation 3 because already we have used equation 1 and 2 so this is equation 3 now uh, important thing is that we are not aware what is the volume of the block however the weight and density uh, or you can say specific weight of the steel block is given to us so we can directly figure out the volume of the steel block that can be uh, straight forward written as weight of the steel block weight of the steel block divided by uh, the density uh, specific weight of the steel block 200 newton divided by this value is your 77 kilo newton kilo newton per meter cube so this value will give you 2.6 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube that is the volume of a steel block so uh, let's figure out what will be the buoyancy force that will be that will be uh, fb fb due to the system so that is container so container we are aware that uh, this point meter uh, 0.9 meter long and we are uh, this is how much uh, wide this is 600 mm wide so 0 0.6 and multiplied by the depth of submergence is d dash and then we multiplied by the uh, specific weight of the fluid that is 9.81 10 to the power 3 plus buoyancy force induced by the uh, steel block that is volume of the steel we have already figured out that is 2.6 10 to the power minus 3 and multiplied by the density of the water the specific weight of the water now this fb force the buoyancy force will be equal equivalent to the total weight of the overall system so we can write that your fb is equal to 500 plus 200 that is 700 newton so uh, this is equation 4 and this is equation 5 we can write it directly that 700 that is equal to 9.81 10 to the power 3 let's say take this common and then this will be 2.6 10 to the power minus 3 minus 3 plus 0.54 times of d dash and from using this particular equation we can directly figure out what is the d dash is comes out to be 0.127 meter so that is your answer now if you uh, compare the two answer if you can see in first case the answer was coming out to be 0.132 meter 
and second case what has happened that this uh, submergence is 127 so earlier this was 132 mm and now the submerged height is 127 meter you can conclude that con container floats higher in the water because when the block is supported under the water its buoyancy force reduces the force needed to support it another important point is that the answer we have uh, we have figured out is independent of the depth of the block at which it is placed that means uh, if it is submerged at any depth the answer will be same so i hope this uh, particular example uh, will be enough to uh, make you clear about the concept next topic for the discussion is hydrometer so this is a device which is used for the uh, measuring the specific uh, specific gravity of the liquid of any liquid using the principle of buoyancy so this this particular device is based upon the principle of buoyancy A hydrometer is shown over here in this hydrometer if we can see this is a glass tube this is a glass tube such that there is a graduated cylinder is over there however at the bottom there is a weighted mass is over there now on this particular cylinder there are some graduations and using this particular graduations, we can uh, quickly measure the specific gravity of any liquid where it has been inserted. So before uh, proceeding to uh, this, let's understand how it works. Now, uh, if we insert this hydrometer inside any fluid and uh, let's start with this fluid is our water. So once it is inserted into the fluid, uh, water, this will float and at any location up to where it is measuring we can mark a uh, sw this is the specific weight is equal to 1.0 how it has been devised let's understand so once uh, you insert this hydrometer inside the water this will rest at this position any position and if this is a pure water every time you insert it will be always uh, floating with such that that this particular portion which is below this line will be uh, submerged and above this one this portion will be floating one using the principle of buoyancy total weight of this hydrometer is let's say this is w now this weight of this hydrometer will be equal to the volume which has been displaced by this bulb that this this volume is being displaced and multiplied by the density specific weight of the water so that will be the total volume of the hydrometer and and suppose this hydrometer is inserted in another liquid here again this will be floating however the submerged length as well as the floating length this is your submerged length and this is floating length and this is your submerged length both will be different depending upon the specific density of the fluid where it has been inserted however in both the cases the weight of the hydrometer is not going to change so let's say once you dipped in another liquid and this liquid is supposed such that this liquid has a say, relative density that is your SL. So SL can be written as a specific weight of the liquid divided by the specific weight of the water. So one can write as that specific weight of the liquid is equal to relative density of the liquid multiplied by the specific weight of the water so in this particular liquid this particular uh, hydrometer has been inserted now 
this is your equation one and in case if equation uh, in this case when uh, we are assuming that the cross section of this particular bulb is your a so what once it has been uh, it has been inserted in the liquid additional depth compared to the water you can say which is h now so volume uh, in the second case which has been replaced by the hydrometer will be v naught plus area of the cross section of this hydrometer measuring gauge multiplied by h and if we multiply with the unit weight of the liquid that is gamma l that will be again the weight of the hydrometer and let's say this equation is 2 write that v naught multiplied by gamma w is equal to v naught plus a h multiplied by gamma l now so this gamma l you can write you can replace with s l multiplied by s w so v naught multiplied by gamma w is equal to v naught plus a h multiplied by a specific uh, or you can say relative density of liquid multiplied by the unit or specific weight of the water so now this will be cancel out now you can straight forward just rearrange this equation and this will look like v naught divided by v naught plus a into h now this is our final equation which we can use to find out the relative density of any liquid now depending upon the various liquids various liquids having various densities various densities the submergence of your hydrometer will be different so let's say the additional submergence compared to the water are h1 h2 s3 so we can calibrate our hydrometer for different densities suppose this is sl1 sl2 sl3 sl4 using this particular device once it is inserted inside the automobile batteries we can have an idea of the density of the acid so when this uh, uh, battery is completely charged the density of the acid inside will be different compared to when battery is discharged now uh, additional thing is over there that if we are uh, putting our hydrometer in a liquid which is heavier than the uh, our water so instead of additional submergence in this direction so this will be floating at a lower depth so this value is your one and if we are putting any heavier liquid suppose this mercury or anything meter will may float like this level and if we are using kerosene or any oil the submergence will be at this level so uh, using this principle of buoyancy we can quickly uh, use this calibration of the device so uh, that's how we 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 uh, i'm just concluding my lecture so today's in today's lecture what we have discussed the principle of buoyancy buoyancy and then we tried to understand the principle of buoyancy using a numerical example numerical example we are, where i have shown that how the position of the weight is affecting the overall submergence of the container and in third case we have evaluated the principle of the principle of the device principle of a device which is called hydrometer for measuring the densities of any liquid additionally i want to tell you that this particular hydrometer is uh, will be used by the civil engineering students when they are studying the soil mechanics subjects so in in the lab when they have to do the particle size gradation particle size gradation fine clay particles or fine soil particles 
then instead of using the sieve method we have to use the hydrometer analysis so let's conclude today's uh, lecture thank you